welcome to Catalyst 444 YouTube channel. Today I will be teaching you how to calculate the number of stereoisomers in an organic molecule. Anytime you are given a question that says how many stereoisomers are present in this molecule or compound, it's not hard at all. There is an easy method to use. Not this. Number of stereoisomers in an organic molecule can be calculated using the formula 2 raised to power n. This is the formula you use to calculate for number of stereoisomers. So let's write it down. Number to power n. And what does n stand for? n stands for so this means that when you are looking for number of stereoisomers in a molecule, all you need to find is N. And what does N represent? N represents the number of chiral centers or chiral carbons present in the molecule. When you find the number of chiral centers present, raise 2 to that number. That is 2 raised to the power N. And that is your number of stereoisomers. Let's take an example. A question like this. If you look at this question on the board, the question says how many stereoisomers are possible for this structure on the board? How many stereoisomers are possible for this structure? Now, all we need to do is this. Find the number of chiral centers or chiral carbons present in the structure given to you. Let's draw this in the normal form. The carbon atoms here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, even if you don't want to draw it in the normal method showing the carbons and the hydrogens, you can actually get the answer here. Just note this. Anytime you have a structure like this, something like this, for instance, if you have this, and you want to know the, non, the groups attached to the carbon here, you know that there are carbons at these positions here. Every junction represents a carbon atom. Now here, the carbon atom here, if you have a carbon here, the number of bonds surrounding this carbon atom here are 1, 2, 3. And you know that every carbon atom in organic chemistry must be surrounded by a total of 4 bonds. Now, around this carbon here, you have only 3 bonds, 3 lines, which means it needs one more. The number of bonds remaining represents the number of hydrogens it will carry. So the carbon here has one H. Now, let us draw this structure in the normal method by showing the carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms present. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon atoms, which is this one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's start from here. Here, which is this, we we'll have OOH, that is carboxylic acid. So I have my OOH here. The second carbon, I have nothing here. The third one, I have OH, which is here. The fourth one, nothing. The fifth one, bromine. I have bromine here. Now, this is this. All I need to do now is to complete the bonds. Remember that in organic chemistry, every carbon atom must be surrounded by a total of four bonds. Four lines. Now, around this carbon, how many lines can you see? All around this carbon. Only one line. Only this. So, there are, we need three more lines. And the number of lines required to complete it represents the number of hydrogen atoms that carbon atom will have. 
Now, this carbon, if you check around it, you will see only two lines. That was this and this, only two bonds. So it needs two more bonds, which means two hydrogens. You use hydrogen to balance up. Here, we have only one, two, three, remaining one. There must be a total of four. So that remaining one, I'll put it here. The remaining H is here. On this carbon, I have only one, two lines, remaining two more. I'll use H to complete it. Here, I have H here on this one. I need two more to complete it for every bond, every carbon must carry four bonds. One, two, three, four. Now this carbon, if you check all around it, you will see one, two, three, four bonds. So this carbon is complete. As long as the number of bonds around it is four, you don't need to put a H. Okay, now let's find out the chiral carbons here. Among these seven carbon atoms, which ones are chiral? Let's start from here. Remember, in the previous video, I explained the meaning of chiral carbon. If you did not watch the previous videos, you can go back, check on chiral carbon. Now, I told you that a chiral carbon atom is a carbon atom which is bonded to four different groups. This carbon atom, if you have a carbon like this, which is bonded to four different atoms or groups, when the atoms here or groups bonded here are all different from themselves, then the carbon atom is said to be chiral. If I have H, OH, bromine, chlorine, when the four groups here are all different, then this carbon atom is chiral. But if any two of them or three are the same, like HH, the carbon is not chiral. Okay, so let's find the chiral carbons. From here, we have similar groups bonded to it, so this carbon is not chiral. Here, we have H and H, so this carbon is not chiral. Let's look at this. Up here, we have a H. Down here, we have bromine. At the back, we have the whole of this, which is ethyl. If you draw this, you have something like this. This carbon here, H is up, bromine is down. At the back, I have C2, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, H5. That is all of this. Now, in front, that is here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4. That is C4, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 hydrogens and 1, 2, 3, 3 oxygens. Now this is what I have in front. So you notice that the whole of this, this, this and this, the four groups bonded to this carbon are all different from themselves. So this carbon here is chiral. This one is chiral. This one has H and H, the same thing, so it's not chiral. This one has, let's draw this one. Up here we have H, down we have OH, in front we have, that is the front, this way, from here, the whole of this, C2, that's this two, H1, 2, 3, H3, and oxygen, 1, 2, O2. And at the back, that is the whole of this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. C4, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. H8, and 1 bromine, BR1. Now, you notice that what we have in front is different from what we have up, different from what we have down, different from what we have at the back. So this carbon is bonded to four different groups, therefore this carbon is chiral. On this carbon, this carbon has two similar groups, hydrogen, hydrogen, so this is not chiral. Now this carbon has here oxygen, here OH, and the hole at the back, that is we have this, and at the back, the hole of this, here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, C6, 
H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then we have oxygen, 1, and we have bromine, 1. Now the whole of these are at the back, this way. We have this and we have this. Yes, this carbon is bonded to different groups, but the groups are not up to four. For it to be chiral, the groups must be four in number, this way. There must be four groups, but there are only three, so this is not chiral. Okay, we have been able to identify the chiral carbons, that is, the carbon here is chiral, and the carbon here is chiral. The rest are not chiral. And because we have identified them, the two of them, we can now solve the problem. We have our chiral carbons here and here. Therefore, the number of stereoisomers the molecule will have will be equal to 2 raised to power n. And we have found our n to be two chiral centers. That means we have 2 raised to power 2. And that will give us 2 times 2, which is equal to 4 stereoisomers. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to share with your friends. Invite them to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.